What are the different kinds of cabins on a cruise ship and which one is right for you? I've got what you need to know up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com. Your stateroom on a cruise ship is your home away from home during a cruise. And when you book a cruise, you'll have to choose which type of room for your family. A cruise ship cabin can vary considerably from compact and utilitarian to lavish and large. There are rooms designed for just one person, and then there are rooms designed for an entire family. So which should you book and which should you not book? And what mistakes could you make in the process? Well, the exact room will depend on your budget, preferred location, and type of amenities you want in a room. And today I'm gonna to break down the important things to know about picking a stateroom cabin. So let's start with the really, really basics because before we jump into the types of cabins, there's a common distinction that every cabin has across the fleet. All rooms on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship come with a couple of basics, a bed, private bathroom, safe, shower, television, vanity area, and closet. So you're gonna get that no matter what. Beyond that, the room you select may offer more amenities, but you should know that a cabin has some basics that you don't have to be concerned about missing out on. So there's no need to worry about sharing a bathroom with people you don't know or anything weird like that. That's not the case on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. So let's start off with that. All right, let's start with the types of cabins we've got. First of all is the inside cabin, sometimes called the interior or inside rooms. These cabins are the smallest and usually the lowest cost rooms available on the ship. Inside cabins can accommodate two to four guests, depending on the configuration, and feature no outside view beyond the cabin. This means no windows, portholes, or balcony doors. They may be smaller than other categories, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily cramped either. Most guests that book inside rooms will usually talk about the fact that, number one, the lower cost, and the fact there's so much happening on board the ship that time spent in your room is minimal. So if all you're going to be doing is sleeping, showering, and changing in there, and then you're off to the races doing all the fun all around the ship, why bother spending more money for a bigger room? Well, with that in mind, we're going to move on to interior rooms with a view. There's a little bit of a variation off of a traditional interior room. As I mentioned, inside rooms have no views at all. But in addition to those, Royal Caribbean also has a few other options, essentially for an interior room concept. These are rooms that lack a natural window view outside the ship, but they still feature a view of something else. There's the Royal Promenade view rooms that have a bay window that overlook the Royal Promenade area. Pulling back the curtain allows for that view of what's happening on the promenade below, which is really great for people watching. Then you also have the virtual balcony, which is a regular inside room that features a floor to ceiling, high definition television that shows a real time view of what's happening outside your ship. There's even the silhouette of a balcony dynamically inserted into the view to make it look like you're basically standing in front of your balcony. And yes, there is sound there as well. No smell of vision yet. And lastly, you have the Central Park view rooms. This is a window that offers a view into the Central Park neighborhood rather than the ocean, which leads us right to our next category, which is an ocean view room. So essentially the next step up from a standard inside room is an ocean view cabin, which offers a little bit more living space and has an outside window or porthole. The porthole windows don't open, but they do offer a view of the ocean from your room. The exact size of this window or porthole will really vary from ship to ship, but it's usually large enough to easily see through without having to be like right up against the glass. These rooms usually cost a little bit more than an inside room. And the other advantage they have is they're gonna have natural light in there, which for some people is really important. And just like inside rooms, they can accommodate two to four guests. The next category of rooms is probably the most popular one, and that is a balcony room because it offers a private balcony in addition to the standard accommodations. A private balcony, by the way, means you can go onto your balcony anytime you want to enjoy the outdoors along with the smells, sounds, and the weather. Each balcony has a table and at least chairs to sit on. Some of the larger balconies even have loungers. There are a lot of different types of balcony rooms that are out there, and they're broken down by room size and location. Balcony rooms can accommodate two to four guests, and Royal Caribbean also has balcony rooms on its Oasis-class ships that offer a view of Central Park or the boardwalk neighborhoods instead of the ocean. These inward-facing balcony rooms tend to be priced a little bit lower than the ocean balcony rooms. The price for a balcony is usually affordable, but greatly depends on other factors as well. A lot of times, cruisers will find balcony rooms to be within their budgets and a desirable choice, quite frankly, for the larger living space and the open-air balcony perk that it has. I think there's a really good reason why you're going to be finding balcony rooms being the most popular category because they just offer the best of what everybody's really looking for at a minimum, and it's at an affordable price. Now, if you're cruising solo, there's also another type of room called a studio cabin. 
This is a lesser known category because there aren't many of them in Royal Caribbean's fleet, but studio cabins are designed for someone going on a cruise by themselves. These are smaller rooms that offer accommodations for a solo cruiser without the usual single supplement fee associated with going on a cruise with double occupancy. That means instead of paying double the price for staying by yourself in a room, these solo rooms don't have that cost to them. Now, as I mentioned, these studio rooms are really few and far between and often book really quickly because there's a lot of solo people who want to book it. Not every ship has one and some ships only have a couple of rooms. Solo cabins can be a really good idea if you want to save money while cruising by yourself, but they sell out so quickly that they just might not be an option by the time you go to book. Something that's kind of new to Royal Caribbean in terms of cabin categories is a panoramic room. These are cabins that are as large as a balcony room but without an outdoor space. Instead, the room features a floor-to-ceiling window that offers a wide-angle view of the ocean from all around you from anywhere in the room. The windows range between 103 to 321 inches wide, but rest assured you are getting a very large window. So instead of being able to go outside, you just get to see it from inside. And it's a pretty neat view. Not only do panoramic views include a great view of the outside, the category VP ocean view panoramic suite actually comes with full sweep benefits, such as concierge service and complimentary alcohol beverages each evening, which is really cool. And then of course you have at the very top of the category, the suites, right? And these are really your option to have a luxury upgraded accommodation while on board. There are quite a few types of suites that essentially differ based on their location, size of the room, and how many people they can accommodate, and of course, its benefits. The lowest tier of the suites is the junior suite, which is really just an extra large balcony room because it offers significantly more space without the full suite benefits. If you really want to get the full suite benefits, you got to move up to a grand suite. And this is where, again, the suite experience begins on any ship. And each type of suite beyond a grand suite includes even more living space there. The exact type of suites will vary from ship to ship. On Royal Caribbean's Oasis and Quantum class ships, there's a special program for suites known as the Royal Suite Class, which offers enhanced suite offerings. Of all the types of suites, there are a few notable suite categories that I think stand out from the rest as really interesting. First of all, you've got the Royal Loft Suite. Again, only available on the Oasis and Quantum class ships. The Royal Loft Suites are two level suites and the Loft Suites come in a few sizes that can sleep up to six guests and feature a large window on top of a private balcony. The split level design means there's lots of living space included in a flashy configuration. And arguably one of the most interesting, coolest and intriguing suites out there is the Ultimate Family Suite because it's just so ornate, possibly the most ornate ever created if you ask me and it really lives up to its name by offering just about everything a family would want in a room you've got in suite slide air hockey table table tennis giant balcony jacuzzi and more part of the room it's a large space with lots for families to enjoy while at sea and the ultimate family suite is available on symphony and spectrum of the seas and then you have the Aqua Theater Suite, also, again, only available on Oasis-class ships. This is a massive room that has a giant wraparound balcony with views of the ocean and the Aqua Theater below. I really think the outdoor views are what makes this type of suite truly stand out because if you're staying in an Aqua Theater Suite, you have on-demand views, not only the ocean around you with a lot of different angles, but you're actually able to see the Aqua Theater shows right below you from your balcony. So there's no need to go and reserve a seat there's no one to compete with. You just walk on your balcony and you can see the show from there, which is really cool. So when it comes to suites, I'm sure you're asking, well, is it worth a match? Should I get a suite? Well, really, there is Splurge that offers the largest cabins on a cruise ship, along with special perks and amenities. All this, of course, is becoming at an increased price, and that price is usually significantly more than lower categories of rooms. The choice to book a suite is almost always about cost, in my opinion. And if your vacation budget allows for it, a suite can be a great idea. So what's the best cabin on a cruise ship? Well, the best cabin will depend on your preferences and budget. There is no inherently bad cabin to pick. So it's really a matter of choosing the right room that you can afford and would feel comfortable staying in. Suites are attractive because they're lavish, but their price usually precludes them from most people's plans. Sometimes their prices can be reasonable and sometimes they're really out there. A balcony room is a good mix of space at an affordable price, but you could save a lot of money by moving down to an interior room and then using those savings to spend on shore excursions drink packages, souvenirs, or heck, even another cruise altogether. Ultimately, the decision of the best cab is going to be coming down to price, 
size, and location. If you really don't know where to start, I would say in general, it's really hard to go wrong with a balcony room for nearly all first-time cruisers. A balcony room is usually a good value and includes enough living space with the added bonus of that private balcony so many look for in a stateroom option. It's a great choice and it's usually at an affordable price as well. If money is tight, well then maybe consider bumping down to an ocean view or inside room and then plan to spend more time around the ship than lounging around in your room. And Let's face it, if you're accustomed to buying first-class airfare or bigger suites in a hotel, well, then I think a suite on a cruise ship might be a really good choice for you. I also think it's important to talk about cabin location because where your cabin is located can be just as important as the type of room you're selecting. Royal Caribbean's cruise ships are massive, and picking your room location means you have to take into account access and convenience to a number of public areas on the ship. It's important to know that there is no bad location on a cruise ship. It's just a matter of personal preference in terms of which location means more to you. It's difficult to make generalizations about cabin locations because it can be a very subjective decision, but my basic guidelines are as follows. In general, the most sought after location for a room is midship because it's centrally located relative to all the amenities and spaces on board. And this is true of all cruise ships. And depending on your preferences and itinerary, this may or may not be important to you. In addition, being centrally located is what most guests who are sensitive to motion on the ocean choose because the center of the ship tends to have the least sensation of movement. Those that can become easily seasick may want to take special consideration when choosing where your room is located. And when it comes to picking a stateroom location, arguably the most important criteria can be how close or far your cabin is from certain onboard facilities. Some people really prefer to be close to the pool deck and other people just simply like easy access to say the Royal Promenade or the Centrum and altogether other people just want to be in close proximity to the elevators. As they say, it's all relative, but consider your cabin's proximity to public spaces near, above, or below your room when selecting it. On larger ships, it takes a lot of time to walk from one point to another which is more of an issue than on smaller ships where the walking distance is not too great to truly be concerned, provided, of course, you don't have any mobility issues. Now, speaking of location, you may also want to consult deck plans before choosing your room because you want to see how close your room is to public areas that tend to maybe generate a lot of noise. If you're a light sleeper, some rooms that are above or below a nightclub, restaurant, pool, or some other public area can suffer from noise bleed. How much noise bleed and how bad an issue can really vary, again, depending on you and, of course, the ship. If you're at all concerned about this, my advice is look at those deck plans and make sure the deck above your room and below your room are not public areas. They're other staterooms. That's usually a good way to go about it. There's also the choice of having your room on the left, aka the port side, or the right side of the ship, aka the starboard side. In all my years of cruising, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think it matters at all, and I think it's the least important consideration since you never know where you'll be facing and how the ship's going to move and if it's going to dock forward-facing, backing in. Don't worry about it. Some people get really wrapped up about it. I think, quite frankly, it's just not worth it. So let's talk about what kind of rooms I would recommend because I talked about a balcony being a really good recommendation in and of itself. But how about if you're cruising alone? Well, keep in mind that most eight rooms come with a single supplement fee, which means you'll pay extra to subsidize the lack of another passenger. Basically, they're going to be charging you for two people, whether you have two or not. There are some staterooms that are specifically designed for solo cruisers, as we talked about earlier, but they're rare and only in a handful of ships. If you're sailing with kids, you may want to consider my favorite tips, which is to book two smaller connecting rooms instead of one larger room. Family-sized staterooms are extra-large versions of regular staterooms as well that are designed with larger groups in mind. They offer much more space without typically higher prices that come with a room of that size, like AKA a suite. Family-sized staterooms may not be available to see on Royal Caribbean's website at all times, and they also tend to have a minimum amount of people in the room to become available, so check with their travel agent about it. But I really think the two adjacent or connecting rooms is a really good idea for families because you're going to be getting added space, an extra bathroom, and, of course, separation between each other with that common door. Regardless, a second room is an option to consider for larger groups that just need more space. If you're cruising as a couple, oh, isn't that cute? You'll find most options to choose from since staterooms are really designed for two people almost always. Nearly all rooms have twin beds that can be separated or combined to form a queen size bed. You can always request from your stateroom attendant the configuration that you want. And since cruising with friends is becoming more popular, again, the bed configuration can be altered as needed. In addition, some cabins have third and fourth berths, which means options like sofa beds and Pullman beds, which are beds that pull down from the ceiling, can fit everybody comfortably. So there's your basic idea of what to look for when choosing a cabin for your cruise. There's a lot of different choices that are out there. I don't think you necessarily need to overthink it. Just think about what's important to you 
be reasonable about how much time you think you're going to spend on board, especially in your room, and then maybe make his choice based on that. Certainly a good travel issue can key you in on some recommendations as well. But again, if all else fails, a balcony room midship is usually a crowd pleaser. It's hard to ever go wrong with that. Let me know in the comments, what are your advice and tips for booking a room? Let me know what types of cabins do you usually book? And is there any type of cabin you always avoid? I'd love to hear about those in our comments section. While you're down below this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications. That's that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button where YouTube will let you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.